So welcome everyone to Zinc Daily Vlogs. We're so excited to bring this to you on a daily basis and just our information uh, that we've had kind of stuck in our heads and now we're able to get out. So we're so excited for you to join us in today's episode. Let's talk about something that you, you and I have talked about a lot and, and kind of, you know, people that play tennis or even, you know, anything in life, but I think it's important that they, you know, they think a little bit more short term and smaller goal instead of that thinking big. And that's, that's kind of where we really talk a lot about that as we've done our camps and coaching kids now is like starting to think a little bit more highly of themselves and mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, a little bit outside of the box because everybody wants to be put inside that box and or wants everybody to put them in the box instead of getting out. So share, share with us your thoughts on kind of how that's helped you, but also what you would want everyone to, to kind of think about when they're out there. Yeah. So I think that I've been uh, criticized for this a little bit in my life is that I always tell a student when they come to me is, uh, I just had a really uh, great experience uh, that I started working with Mira Gladstone. And you know, one of the things, we had dinner the night, uh, the first night that I started working with her. And one of the things that I told her, uh, she's one of the hardest workers I've ever worked with. And you know, one of the things that I told her was, you know, make sure you don't put a roof over your head in anything you do. And what that meant was, you know, I don't like what you're talking about the box. I don't like limits. And, and one of the things that I get criticized for is that, you know, don't tell a kid that he can be, you know, number one in the world um, if he can't. And I understand that to a degree because I have two kids now, but I don't think I'm the one telling them. I think mm -hmm. what I can do through my actions and through my behavior is that I can put a roof over their head. You know, I, I know that my father, you know, accidentally did it to me. You know, my dad grew up in a small town called Mount Joy, Pennsylvania, and he was a very successful real estate, you know, uh, broker. And but he never wanted to do any kind of real estate outside of Mount Joy. Mm -hmm. So when I started playing tennis, you know, he didn't you know, he didn't grasp the fact that I could play professional tennis and didn't understand it, which was fine. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, criticize him for that. But one of the things that I learned from that is that, you know, to put a roof over somebody's head is how do I know? How do I know what the next step? I'm not saying that people are coming to me that they're going to be the next Roger Federer or Serena Williams. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that whatever their goals are i'm here to help them achieve them and you are help you you know we are as a team there to help them achieve that goal yeah. and i just think that so many people want to be have these limiting beliefs and when you have these limiting beliefs you know it limits you you know mm -hmm. and and so I, I think that we set our goals you know look i'm all about making realistic goals mm -hmm. but uh, once then once that goal is attainable let's make another goal let's 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 try to figure it out and again the, pr the journey and the process I have a great story about a guy that I know very well that was a uh, professional tennis player mm -hmm. and he got to about 280 in the world and we had we had dinner one time and I, I asked him I said you know tell me about your tennis career do you feel like it was a success or a failure and he quickly answered that I, I felt like I was a failure and you know, and I sat there, and I was about 15 years older than him, and and I sat there and for an hour and told him all the things that he why he didn't fail. You know, he got a he was the top 280 players in the world. That's a success. Mm -hmm. You know, he might not have been a Roger Federer, but he he was unbelievable. And we mm -hmm. left that conversation. And this is a true story. Uh, we left it. We left that conversation, and didn't that guy go out and? you know, create an unbelievable business. And now he's one of more of the successful entrepreneurs that I know. And, and he calls me all the time and he says, George, you know, that conversation, I just remember you switched that on me, what I took something as a failure and I took it as to a success. So sometimes if we are, if our goal is a little higher than, than we reached, okay, so what does that mean? You know, that like we mm -hmm. ended up a little short of it, but we still were successful. I think it's, Perception is everything, and I think that we really need to focus on where we, what we did, and not what we didn't do. And mm -hmm. in his case, you know, he was, you know, achieved a lot. My case, right? You know, I was top, you know, you know, in, you know, ATP, not not the top 100 or 200 in the world, but I achieved an ATP ranking, which was awesome. I look back at my career now, coming from a little town in Mount Joy, that I was successful. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a lot of successes. So I'm a big believer that you can't. Uh, you know, put roofs over your head. Let's 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 shoot for the sky and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, you know, waking up with a good perspective every day, with a good, you know, 
a good punch and, and ready to fire to the world. And you know, look, you know, we're gonna have some setbacks, no question. But let's keep let's keep reaching for the stars. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic, and and definitely something that everyone needs to to take into account. Absolutely. You were talking you were talking just a second ago about a friend that you had and and uh, and how you helped him and talk a little bit about along the lines of that the relationships that you meet and, and how people influence one another in the tennis world and how that kind of mentoring and also just what you've learned through the court and, and the experience you're able to share with relationships and things like that yeah. and, and people that you've met and coached and and how those relationships are going now yeah so man that's a big one I think that First of all, I owe my life to tennis. Uh, the why I'm sitting here with Ben, uh, we've had an unbelievable relationship mm -hmm. and um, he's my best friend and partner. Uh, I think that, I don't think that would have happened maybe without tennis, you yeah. know? I think um, my really true, my good friends, uh, there's some interwoven um, meeting that was from tennis. So I think tennis has treated me very well. The one thing I would say with any sport or with any you know musical instrument or whatever, you create this network and with that network you meet people and people have always kind of you know kind of made fun of me that I'm curious George that I kind of want to know. But with that curiosity uh, comes uh, you know asking people what they do and finding out what they are doing. So I can say that I have friends all over the world that tennis has provided me and the connections that I have. I can you know call people uh, any day of the week to to ask for a favor um, you know and and they would do it you know and I think that that's that's through tennis and, and the relationship. So. I think that you know that's the the other side of the competition. I have good mm -hmm. friends that I competed the national titles with, and I'm, I'm you know I, I you know just last week uh, for example, um, Tyler and I were practicing at um, sorry at the Orange Bowl, and I called up a really good friend of mine that he and I played in the semis of the nationals, and uh, his name is Andrew Lake, and what a great guy. And you know I called him up, and he he works at a club, and. And I said, hey Andy, I said, we're looking for a place to practice in the morning. And without hesitation, he was in California playing a father-son with his son. And without hesitation, he says, hey George, you know, you know, you're more than welcome at my club. And I can't tell you, that, that just meant Ty Tyler and I feel so good. Uh, and, and we had this nice, you know, club that we practiced at. And I'm just so thankful, those, those kind of friendships, uh, mm -hmm. I can't say enough. So, is just you know just because I'm a person's competitor doesn't mean I can't be with matches over shake hands and 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 get to know that person and, and create and cultivate relationships I think that's huge yeah absolutely a lot of yeah all my friends as well uh, tennis somewhere for sure so true so uh, but you know just kind of as we're finishing up here tell us you know I think as I look down the list here of all the things the biggest thing that I, that, you know, that I feel is is important over the overlying thing is, is just passion and moving forward and enjoying the process and what we've kind of talked about. How do I do this day to day? What what makes uh, you know things like that? You know, day to day is tough and, and kind of focusing in on that it can be very difficult. How do I make kind of do that day to day and kind of make it my life a little bit better each day? Yeah. So I have a I have a chapter in that book that's called chunking. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, to me, I think we start to think about it's too big, mm -hmm. right? I think um, you and I kind of went on a little bit of a nutrition kick in the last mm -hmm. couple months. And, you know, sometimes that can be overwhelming to people. Um, but, you know, we had to kind of chunk it down into, you know, bite size amounts, right? So mm -hmm. we can handle this. And so I always tell people to go hour for hour, minute to minute, whatever it is. And I think, if you chunk things, right, it, it, it is, is to be able to say, look, I can only really control things this hour, this minute. Stay present, mm -hmm. right? I think if you stay present, that's everything. Uh, so I won't tell you that the day-to-day -day is easy because the day-to-day -day isn't always easy. Mm -hmm. But what I will tell you is that we really just need to chunk it and, and, and put it in, in perspective and, and, and just, you know, okay, can I do this for this hour? Mm -hmm. Can I, can like, let's talk about a match. I want to change my attitude. I want to change my attitude in a match, but it's overwhelming. You know, I've been negative for 10 years. How can I change it? Mm -hmm. So that's where I would start by playing one game. You mm -hmm. know, can we play one game without saying a word? You know, so I, I'd like to break it down into very small amounts and then be able to handle that and then, you know, move on. So day to day even sounds like a lot. I heard a great, um, a great quote. Um, from a girl that wrote a book, uh, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank on her name, uh, 
Glennon Melton Doyle, I think her name is, and she wrote a book called Love Warrior. And one of the things that she said in the book, and she said, you know, just do the next right thing. Mm -hmm. Do the next right thing. You know, so right, we're in this minute right now, on uh, this second right now, do the next right thing. And I think if you live your life by that, mm -hmm. so me, if I'm out on the court, if, I, if I'm chirping negative stuff, that's not the, ne the next right thing. And I can mm -hmm. remind my student that, um, hey, you know, Tom, you know, one of the things I want you to do is, you know, after you miss that forehand, I want you to ask yourself the question, what's the next right thing? And I think if you do the next right thing, you're gonna see this, the fact that um, they start to blend and the next right thing, the next right thing becomes that day to day. And I mm -hmm. think that is huge. So smaller amounts, you know, don't try to think of it all at once. If I'm, you know, trying to lose, you know, 30 pounds, don't try to think about, oh my gosh, I got to lose 30 pounds. Let's lose a quarter of a pound. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's start eating well today. Let's get, yeah. let's get rid of these, this one food that was, you know, bad. And let's try to do that. I think if we do that, you're going to knock it out of the park. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us today. We've really appreciated you spending your time with us. We love sharing this information with you. So uh, we just hope that you guys are enjoying this and uh, look, give us your feedback on uh, YouTube and on our Facebook page. We just love to hear from you. Uh, check back tomorrow again for another episode of our daily vlog. Thank you, George. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Ben. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.